Jamaica lives by the motto, out of many, one people, attributing the unity to all the cultural pieces that have made them who they are today. First of all, the country has about three million people and is the third largest Anglophone nation in the Americas. The vast majority of Jamaicans identify as black at over 90%, about 7% are mixed, and the remainder are actually mostly made up of Asians, not whites, like the Chinese and Indian Jamaicans, with whites following after, mostly descended from British colonialists and other people groups following. And the coolest thing is they all speak in a Jamaican accent. Here's a white guy and a Chinese guy both born in Jamaica. Yeah. I um, come from Jamaica. We come from the western part of Jamaica. Can't really tell you where we come from down there though because we don't know where we come from. I'm Jamaican. Only for people don't believe me. Them don't believe I come from Jamaica because I'm Chinese. Yeah, that was pretty cool, wasn't it? They use the Jamaican dollar as their currency. They use the type A, B, American style plug outlets and they drive on the left side of the road. Now, even though they have a small population, Jamaica has probably made the biggest global impact for Caribbean culture out of all their neighbors. In the quickest way I can summarize their history, Tainos and Arawaks, Christopher Columbus comes in and calls it Santiago, slaves come in from Africa, Brits come in calling it Jamaica, slavery abolished in 1838. The Brits were like, dang, we need cheap labor since the slaves are free. Hmm, oh yeah, let's do the same thing we did with Guyana. Come on, Indians and Chinese. Finally, Jamaica gained independence in 1962. However, they still fall under the Commonwealth as a constitutional monarchy where Queen Elizabeth still remains the technical head of state, but nobody really sees her as like the head head of state. Now, due to Jamaica's relative isolation from the rest of the Antilles, Jamaica had to kind of develop their own unique style of customs and traditions. For one, Christianity has played a huge role in Jamaica. Jamaica. Jamaica also has more churches per square kilometer than anywhere else in the world. Contrary to popular belief, Rastafarianism, although started in Jamaica in the 1930s, only makes a small minority of somewhere around 5% of the population. If you don't know anything about Rastafarianism, basically it's an Afrocentric belief system that takes inspiration from the Christian Bible as certain rituals and doctrines like the one we discussed in the Ethiopia episode in which they believe that Haile Selassie was the Messiah, yada yada yada. If you're interested in learning it, just Google it. I wish it was that easy. I wish I could just do that for every episode. Just Google it. Jamaica. Done. Second, we all know the biggest source of global influence for Jamaica would be, no doubt, the music. Starting in the 50s, Jamaica's ska and rock steady precursors to the 60s reggae and dancehall melodies not only became super popular in themselves, but also paved the way for other branch genres like hip hop and EDM. In order to really appreciate Jamaican music though, it might be wise to brush up on the part I personally find most fascinating, patois. Now, although in a legal sense, the official language of Jamaica is standard Jamaican English or SJE, many will say that technically there are two languages, the other being Jamaican patois, which is basically like an English Creole, much like what Haiti did with French. The thing is, Jamaican Patois is kind of like a loose, feel it as you go type of language. It doesn't have an official standardized format, but there are certainly universally used words, such as Talawa, Crosses, Pitney, Dopi, Big Up, and of course, everyone knows the classics Wagwan and Airi. However, when they want to emphasize something, they like repeat a word twice, like Pasa Pasa, Liki Liki, Picky Picky, and they always use like filler words which don't have any meaning, but it kind of illustrates the story better. For example, okay, Jamaican geography, Darren wrote this, and I'm going to try to see if I could do it. So, Miko, so bumps and run a race, then me go err and run hard, and me go rups, rups, flick, flick, and me win it easily. I don't know how I did. That was either incredibly offensive or kind of acceptable. Oh, and if you make a Jamaican friend, chances are you will get a nickname. And it's usually based off of anything they notice from you. Yo, man, what your name? Uh, Keith. No, nah, man, you like the broom, your name broomy. You eat the cupcake, your name Munchie. You're raising three daughters in a house in San Francisco. Me go and call you Bob Saget. Like that! Anyway, we could go on explaining more about the various festivals, traditions, dances, or how they are the only Caribbean nation with an active hockey team, even though all the players are like literally Canadian nationals, but that'll take too long. For what it's worth, some notable people of Jamaican descent might include Michael Lee Chin, Dr. Thomas P. Leckie, Oliver Samuel, Sprinters Usain Bolt, Shelly Ann Fraser Price, and Asafa Powell, Merlin Oti, Dustin Brown, Jimmy Cliff, Ziggy Marley, Shaggy, Mona Hammond, Grace Jones, Sonia Richards Ross, Mary Seacole, Damian Marley, Sean Kingston, Portia Simpson Miller, Marcus Garvey, Naomi Campbell, Notorious B.I.G., Patrick Ewing, Louis Simone Bennett, and the most iconic Jamaican maybe of all time, the master himself, Robert Bob Nesta Marley. All right, now we gotta move on and see who else likes to dance the reggae beat with Jamaica.